Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Great Goddess. Praise be to Goddess. Praise be to Goddess. Well, I've been watching uh, I Thrive for about a week now. And I've learned so much from this series. It's a really good series. Um, very, very instructive was the the uh, almost hour and a half long talk about the dynamics of food addiction and addiction in general and how the brain reminds you time and time again to eat that that food that you that that's your problem food and it reminds you to eat your problem food you, it just springs into your head you just think about it at the at the least least expected time at the least expected time maybe one week maybe two weeks maybe three weeks after you've gotten over the hump after you've gotten over the initial craving your brain will remind you of that food and you'll have the craving again so um if if you if you have if you have if you go off cold turkey off the food um that you've been craving that you're addicted to the craving goes up the first day and it goes up even more the second day and it goes up even more the third day and it goes up even more the fourth day so the first let's say the first week um is the hardest and every subsequent day that you're without that food is harder than the last but if you can get past that past the per first five to seven days something known as extinction occurs and the craving subsides and you don't crave that food anymore but then maybe a week later, maybe two weeks later, maybe three weeks later, maybe six months later, out of the blue, out of nowhere, you remember that food and you have a craving for it. Maybe you see the food on a shelf. Maybe someone offers you the food at a party. It doesn't matter. You see the food or else you're thinking about the food all of a sudden, out of the blue, out of nowhere, and you have the craving again. The main thing is to get through that time without giving in. Because if you don't, you'll be right back to square one and have the craving go up and up and up and up and up. So do not do not give in to do not give in to those cravings. But if you're not a hundred percent perfect, that's okay. Um there's something called the ego trap. See, there's two things. There's the pleasure trap and there's the ego trap. And the ego trap makes you want to not do things, do, and not, not to even try, because if you try and you fail, it's a reflection on your ego. So because you don't want to try and fail, you don't try at all and you just make it clear to everyone around you. I'm not even trying. You say, I'm going to begin my diet tomorrow. I'm going to begin it next week. I'm going to begin any time but right now because you don't want to try and fail and have it and have people criticize you for it. So you don't even try. And this is the ego trap. The way to get away around the ego trap is to tell yourself it's okay to make mistakes. And you have to believe this 100% that it's okay to make mistakes. You want to be a bee eater most of the time. You don't want to be an A. You don't need to be an A eater. If you're an A eater, that's great, but don't count on it. And you don't want to be a C or a D eater either because C and D is a failing grade. It's, you're not, you're not uh, benefiting at all from your diet. Um, you want to be a B eater. So you want to do pretty good. And uh, like they said, food addiction is not a, like a hard drug. It's not like heroin. Um, 
it's easier to get past a food addiction. Maybe for some of you, you might say, well, it really isn't. I really have a serious addiction to these foods. And uh, that might be true for you. Everyone's an individual. But in general, these food, uh, food addiction is not as strong as a heroin addiction or a cocaine addiction or a methamphetamine addiction. Those are hard drugs and they're hard to get around and they're hard to give up. Whereas these foods are easier to give up than that. Uh, smoking, um, I think it was the Surgeon General or some the CDC, some branch of the government said that cigarettes were harder to quit than hard drugs, but um, in the opinion of the doctor that wrote The Pleasure Trap, they're really not. Uh, you can get over a, a um, cigarette addiction. It's just a matter of um, being pretty good, being pretty good about not smoking and not giving in when, when temptation faces you and getting over that hump, that first, those first five to seven days until you experience extinction. And you have to go through that. Smokers go through it about eight times. They quit to extinction eight times before they can quit for good. So they do it eight times. And a lot of dieters are the same way. Um, well, actually, dieters sometimes try more than eight times and don't succeed because they don't never give up permanently the foods there. They're problem foods. They allow themselves cheat days, and it completely derails their diet. So remember what food addiction is an addiction. There are problem foods that you should, if you have problem foods, you should give them up um, and uh, not eat them because you're going to go back to them again and again. So uh, give up, give up your problem foods and you should have an easier time of it. Um, you have to get over that pleasure trap. You have to get over that um, siren call that the food, the food pulls on you, pulls on you. You have to get over that pull and that tug and that siren call for the first four to five days. And after that extinction occurs, and you, if you know about these stages ahead of time, it makes it so much easier. And uh, what happens is that maybe a week later, maybe two weeks later, maybe three weeks later, maybe six months later, just out of the blue, you'll think about the food or it'll be on a shelf and you'll see it or it'll be at a party. And it's very important to resist temptation at that time. You don't have to resist temptation the rest of the time when you're not thinking about the food. But you have to get an A at that time. At that time when you see that food, you have to get an A. Otherwise, boom, you get hooked on it again. So um, that's the nature of food addiction. Um, some of the other things that they talked about it, that John McMahon um, that they that they covered in the series, the I Thrive series, is toxins. And um, toxins aren't the main cause of diabetes, but they're a big contributor. And diabetes and, and obesity can be caused by toxins because they change your genetics and turns on bad genes bad genes all light up and they all get turned on by these toxins. Um, some of the things you can do to get rid of the, like the heavy metals are some of the worst. Um, lead, arsenic, which is in brown rice, by the way. Brown rice is a high source of arsenic. And also wheat is a source of arsenic. Lead, arsenic, and uh, mercury like mercury fillings in your mouth or mercury in a, in a um, flu shot or any, or any, um, any, um, you know, uh, vaccination that you might get, any vaccine or vaccination you might get 
they put mercury in it. So you've got mercury in your cells and arsenic and lead. And uh, the way to get rid of these heavy metals plus glyphosate. Glyphosate is a major contributor to turning on these bad genes. And glyphosate also causes leaky gut and leaky brain. And it also um, is toxic in its own right. It's a talk it's a serious toxin and it turns on the bad genes and it, it it's glyphosate is a complete disaster. It's a killer for humans. So glyphosate um, and also uh, BPA. BPA is another one. Now the way to get rid of these, to get rid of them completely, they didn't cover this in the iThrive series, okay? They didn't tell you what to do. But the thing to take is fulvic acid and humic acid. And you can take them in combination like a, a pill where fulvic and humic acid are combined in the same pill. And the fulvic and humic acid goes into your cells. Always take it on an empty stomach. Always when you haven't eaten for four to five hours and when maybe before bedtime, just before you go to sleep so it has time to work all while you're sleeping. You don't want to take it with food. Um, take the fulvic and humic acid on an empty stomach and what it does is, and lots of water, and what it does is it goes into your cells and takes away all the heavy metals and then carries them out of the body. You excrete them in the urine. And uh, what this does is it takes away deposits of heavy metals that you've had for years. Maybe you've had years of accumulation of heavy metals. It takes them away. So I do recommend strongly, um, and it takes away glyphosate too, which is great. So it take it, so fulvic and humic acids are good. And another thing you want to do that they discussed in the I Thrive series is uh, methylation. And one of the big things that that it methylates the the uh, the um, cells is res resveratrol, resveratrol, um, which is found in red grapes. So if you take a resveratrol supplement or eat red grapes, you'll be fine. Um, another, uh, other sources of methylation is all the B vitamins. You want to be sure you're getting all your B vitamins, uh, folate, B12, B6, riboflavin, all of the, all the B vitamins. And also zinc and selenium, those are important minerals. And uh, make sure you're getting certain amino acids. Just make sure you're getting the full spectrum of amino acids, that you're eating a complete protein. Remember, legumes plus grains makes a complete protein, and then the rare aminos you get from, from vegetables. So if you're eating grains, legumes, and vegetables every single day, you're getting enough of these for of these uh, amino acids for methylation and then so you want to be methylated and uh, um, there's su certain supplements like milk thistle that can aid in methylation Meth milk thistle also so resveratrol and milk thistle are the two I recommend um, so yeah, methylate your cells, uh, methylate your DNA. That repairs the damage of the bad genes that have been turned on. It turns the bad genes off again, the methylation does. So, so try it, just try it, see how you feel. And of course, take your resveratrol and so on at a different time from your fulvic and humic acid because fulvic and humic acid binds everything. It just binds everything. So you want to take it at least four or five hours after dinner, maybe preferably at bedtime, and take it with plenty of water. Um, and then take your resveratrol and your and your milk thistle in the morning. And be sure you get plenty of B vitamins, the zinc and the selenium and the amino acids. So that will help with methylation. And, um, you know, just, uh, just do your best. Um, the last episode of the 
series is tonight. They're going to have some testimonials from some people who have been following the special diet and a whole food plant-based diet for for months or whatever and they they uh, improved all of their they improved their obesity and their diabetes and uh, they're going to have the testimonials tonight um, you might not see this video in time to tune in but uh, you can own the series if you want for a, a limited time more they'll have the series for 60% off I think it is so um check it out it's called I Thrive and the host is John J-O-N McMahon M-C-M-A-H-O-N and uh, uh, tune in and see what you think I'm Sarah Jane Alpha Wolf signing off uh, have a terrific week and uh, check out I Thrive oh and um, wish me a happy birthday. My birthday is the August 9th. Wish me a happy birthday.